Welcome to Thinking Women, the Intelligent Conversation Show. And this is the third and final of our trilogy of International Women's Day, um, which has been so exciting. It's been such a joy to have such wonderful women. Brilliant. We've on had the show. such an amazing selection of women. We're so grateful. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We who's really been have. On. So, we just wanted to talk a little bit about International Women's Day 2023. So, in our first show, we talk, went right back to, to 1909, which is when it started. Mm. And then we talked a little bit about what happened in um, the 70s when the UN adopted and started celebrating International Women's Day formally. And we've, we've got actually our logo here for 2023. And the hashtag is Embrace Equity. And we were having a little chat, weren't we, about what does that mean? What does that actually mean? What's the difference between equity and equality? Do you know? I, well, I have done. I have done some research. Yeah. Well, um, so, if equality is the goal, then equity is how we actually get to that goal. So, we've sort of moved on this year to talk about actions that we can all take. This isn't just women; it's men as well. It's children. It's everybody. How we can all actually move towards a place of equality, equality. Yeah. Um, and, and just really good diversity. So that's the message, moving towards equality for everybody. Yeah, Sounds good is. to me. And we've got some amazing guests on, haven't we? Yeah, so I'm interviewing Vic Bain, who uh, is uh, into diversity and inclusion in music. Fascinating woman, super talented lady, doing a lot for uh, women, particularly in music. And um, both of us are talking to Francesca Rouser, who's a social architect, and she's She's got some amazing projects yeah. going, really fascinating women. Really interesting. And I think she's a really good example of how they are actually doing stuff to create equality. Yeah. 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 So that's a living, living, breathing yeah. um, example of that. And then um, I've got Kelsey Michael, who's a singer, songwriter and pianist who is going to be performing for us and talking about her art. And we're actually going to start the show with Kelsey. I woke to a sea of jade and the blustery blue sky White horses on the rampage as the fishing boats rock and ride Oh, and I want to go taste the salt And feel the spray splash up on my face I'm looking for the wind to mess my hair And blow it all over the place I'm talking about a mountain bay morning Without warning, then and you go, 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 get yourself in it, make time while it lasts, and it's a mount spay morning will they come without warning, then and you go, go, get yourself in it, make time while it lasts. I hear the rocks call and the horizon sets me free. Stones glistening, I'm listening to the ebb and flow of the sea. Summer's coming, children will be jumping and doing what they feel. Folks lazing, talking, bathing, cause the people here are real. Oh, and I want to go taste the salt and feel the spray splash up on my face. I'm looking for the wind. To mess my hair and blow it all over the place. I'm talking about a mound spay morning. Will they come without warning? Then and you go, go, go. Get yourself in it. Make time while it lasts. And it's a mound spay morning. Will they come without warning? Then and you go, go. Get yourself in it, make time while it lasts. You gotta make time while it lasts. Why don't you make time while it lasts? Make time while it lasts. Everything shimmering, sparkling new. Everything shimmering, sparkling new. Everything 
shimmer and sparkle in you. Everything shimmer and sparkle in you. I woke to a sea of jade and a blustery blue sky White horses on the rampage and the fishing boats rock and ride Oh, and I want to go taste the salt And feel the spray splash up on my face I'm looking for the wind to mess my hair And blow it all over the place I'm talking about a mound's Come without warning, telling you go, go, get yourself in it. Make time while it lasts, and it's a man's bay So Kelsey, thank you so much for coming on the show. And that was Mount Bay Morning, which was so mm. lovely. Thank you. And just tell us a bit about the influence um, for that. Yeah. Where that came from. Uh, so my house has a window overlooking the bay. And the colours are always changing. And the inspiration is really um, those days when the bay lights up, when the white horses are dancing and... You just feel like you've got to go down and get closer to it and, in, yeah. and get the wind in your hair. Oh, it's so lovely. We definitely feel quite sort of zen after listening to you sing that. It was so nice. And there's definitely influences of Carole King in there and sort of which other songwriters have you Yeah, Carole King definitely. Laura Nairo, I don't know if you know her, um, but she was um, an incredible singer-songwriter in the 60s, 70s and 80s. And she's a massive influence on me. But there's a lot of incredible women, piano songwriters, Aretha Franklin, Carly Simon, guitar. But she, there's, you know, yeah, the women songwriters of that era particularly influenced yeah, me. Yeah, there did seem to be a lot more piano um, around then. Then we went through a phase where there was a lot of guitar, and then that seems to be coming back now, doesn't it? With with artists using the piano. Um, I hope so. More. I mean, personally. The sound of a, an acoustic piano just does something to me. I, I absolutely love them. Yeah. So I, yeah. I'd love to see pianos back in venues. And there are some venues in Cornwall which have real pianos. So we're yeah, quite lucky. Yeah, we are lucky, definitely. And and so also nature is a big influence in your songs as well. And you, you've done some, some nature, some singing walks in the past. Yep. Um, which sound really interesting. But, but that's... So tell me a bit about how that influences your songwriting. It's a huge part of it. Really, I'm writing what I see here in Cornwall and uh, tuning myself into the experiences and, and trying to capture them right from, from the view of the bay to uh, creatures. I've, written, I've got songs about herons. I'm writing a song about um, painted lady butterflies at the moment. So oh, lovely. I'm sort of really getting out the microscope and yeah just looking at the detail and you've yeah. got a new album that you're working on yes and yes. is that what, what is that called it's called lethoso and lethoso. it's a cornish word that means the milky ones and it's okay. refers to the seven stones reef um between um penzance and the Sillies, which always has white water on it because um the rocky reef is so close to the surface so it's there's the album is conjuring up often the crossing between Penzance and and Scilly Which on the Grimeretha and the Salonian they get they both get moments in the music and there is a, a piece of music which actually um, embodies the crossing if you like with two chords changing over uh, and if anyone's done that crossing, it's notoriously um, yeah. rough, I think is the word, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's wild, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit wild, it's, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And there's a lot of history about that stretch of water. Apparently, yeah. 
it was land once upon a time. Right, okay. And it hasn't always been sea, so yeah. that's quite pertinent for, for the times we're living in when so sea when levels is, are So when is the new album going to be out? It's going to be out in the autumn. Okay, so we can yeah. look out for that. And we're going to hear some more from you later with another mm -hmm. song, Washing Line. But thank you so much for coming in singing for us. It's been Pleasure. a real joy, very relaxing and very inspiring. Well, thank you so for thank having you, me. Kelsey. So next up we have Francesca Rouser, who's an architectural practitioner. Welcome, Francesca. Thank you. So I want to talk about the amazing social projects that you're involved in. First up, social designs. Yeah. So can you explain a little bit about what you do for our audience? So social designs was born from different conversations that uh, my co-director and partner and I had when we first started um, our Masters in Sustainable Architecture um, at the Centre for Alternative Technology in Wales. Um, so we had these conversations simmering or these ideas are simmering in our heads for a really long time and it turns out that a lot of other people that were on the course but that we came to meet through sort of uh, spreading our ideas around had the same kind of uh, principles and you know they, they, they're from a frustration with uh, the fact that architecture often is uh, perceived as a, as a tool and a service that is inaccessible to those that uh, do not have financial resources. Um, so we were kind of thinking about ways of uh, formulating uh, the, this profession in a different way and, and trying to like, you know, create a different, a different engagement system that uh, people could have with, uh, with us and provide an architectural service to local communities. Uh, the local communities that we uh, live with. So, you know, we're, we'll see in a minute some pictures of this project that, that is kind of like the core of what we started doing at the beginning, um, which is um, a, a, a part of the Falmouth Food Corp, um, one of the branches of the Falmouth Food Corp uh, that operates within uh, local food systems. Um, in particular, this one is a community field. So it, its aim is to grow uh, vegetables and um, food for the food corp, mm -hmm. then, then get sold uh, with the groceries uh, system or um, gets cooked for the kitchen to, to provide food for whoever applies for the service in Falmouth. Um, but yeah, primarily is a community space. So uh, people come together to it uh, uh, weekly and grow together, celebrate the land together and uh, seek each other as well. Well, like you say, we've got some pictures of this because it's quite, it is very unusual. And certainly I've never heard of anything like this where the community is involved in the buildings and the food and and there we have some of your team working together with the so yeah that's that and in the center of the picture that is my co-director and partner um steve um uh, who's got us into the cultivator corner program mm -hmm. um and the, the people around him are all community members who are um moving pieces of uh, um, wood that are representative of spaces that hypothetically could be part of this building and um, they're doing so on top of a, a tablecloth, which we designed to be a tablecloth, not just as a, as a map of the field, but also as a, as a tablecloth of the feast that um, happened at the same time as the design consultation. And we've got a picture of the feast. <laughs> and I love this idea that you bring people together, you bring food, you bring music, and you've also got the sort of the, the, the food co-op theme going through. How, how important is all that side of it to bring people together and, and get them involved? That is, that is really important. I mean, the, the, the feast in itself is a tradition of, uh, you know, Cornish celebrations of the produce of the land. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to speak about the spaces and the necessities that we have of the land uh, while standing on it and creating different layers of understanding of it through all the senses, not just, you know, in an architecture office, you would look at the map of a place from, from top down and you would point your finger at a place and say, okay, so that's, that's well, it doesn't exactly happen like that, but um, in a way, it's always a, a very detached sort of process. Um, whereas what we are trying to do here is we're trying to like get our knowledge of the place with the place and with, uh, you know, different elements of the place that are not just human networks, but they're like a whole multi-species environment. So we're looking at tree species, plant species, animal species. 
we're looking at what kind of fruit and, and, and vegetable grows in the soil and we're looking at how all of these things, they can inform what kind of architecture we are designing and planning for. Yeah. And how's it working? We've got some examples, I think, of plans. So what are we looking at here? So uh, this is what is uh, our proposal for, uh, for the land at Loveland. After having done these consultation processes, we have uh, understood that the priority for these spaces was to create um, environments that could facilitate the food from the land onto the plate. And oh yeah, so that's what we've got. Yeah, coming next, I there. think as well. Um, this is this is a this is the side. Uh, oh, okay, so this is the front view of you know how um, the the central element of this proposal is eating together uh, in a feast fashion, um, and how people come together. The building um, in the kind of uh, in the in the in the drawing above is. Um, shown um, as an elevation where you have at the back, let's say the hole, the closed hole, so you, the space they use during the winter for things that were mentioned during the consultations, such as, you know, some people want to do meditation up there, some people want to do yoga, some people just want to have tea sitting in the warmth. So that's what that kind of the, the function of that um, part behind the people eating is. Um, and then there's obviously a kitchen and a, and a pantry, so uh, places to do food processing and um, food packaging. Um, as I said, some of it gets delivered to the, um, to the food co-op to be then distributed. Um, but some of it also will be used for, from volunteers on the land to, I don't know, do kimchi, for example. We've had a lot of kimchi workshops and, you know, uh, it's all like very collaborative. Yeah. And, and I love this idea in modern society of people coming together to eat because, you know, for years and years and years we've become so isolated and in our own homes. And now with your architecture, with your ideas, people will be coming together to, to have social spaces and do things together. Yeah, that's, that's the main aim of it. You know, uh, Loveland in itself was started during COVID and people would go up there because they wanted to be out together with other people in a legal way, obviously, you know, it wasn't possible in closed environments. So that is something that is really important to kind of underline when we're doing our architecture. And we wouldn't know that if we were sitting in our offices. Yeah. We've had conversations with the people there. And I think this is a really good example as well. We were talking in the green room about how jobs are going to change with the, you know, the, the advent of like artificial intelligence and computers and having a community come together and actually feed into and feed themselves at the same time <laughs> and feed into the design process is something that computers just can't do. So it's a, a really sort of forward looking way of, of design and talking about the future. So you've got a project for um, girls and that is called Girls Assemble. So as it's International Women's Day, um, we, can we talk a, a little bit about that and tell us about how that's helping the next generation and, um, and girls get involved in STEM and involved in, in architecture? So that's exactly it. I mean, Girls, girls Assemble was born from trying to get uh, women and little girls to um, create the confidence to, uh, to be there on a construction site, but also to, to get introduced to the STEM industry. You know, less than 30% of the workforce in STEM is women. Um, and I, we, we all thought it was really fundamental to create an environment where all of these people could get enough sort of um, care and, uh, you know, understanding and acceptance to, um, um, to, to, to be so confident to go, to go out in the world and, 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 you know, approach one of the STEM uh, uh, subjects. Um, one thing that I always think about is the fact, or I often get asked is, why is my son not coming to, to, your, um, to your workshops? And, you know, it's, it's as simple as saying, you know, so, so many times I have conversations with women and little girls that tell me that, you know, the level of confidence that they can build when in the workshop there is an environment of accept acceptance and you can do mistakes, you can, you can use that really loud and powerful tool because mm -hmm. you can get it wrong. And yeah. we're here to safeguard it's you, safe we're here place to support each other. It's a safe make place. Mistakes and also celebrate as well. Celebrate mistakes as well, yeah. Celebrate mistakes and celebrate successes. Yeah. And not be sort of, you know, told, oh, you shouldn't be boastful about what you're exactly. doing. You know, you're allowed to safely actually to, to celebrate what you can do. Oh, that's exactly. really wonderful. So two very sort of different ideas there in terms of getting involved in architecture. 
which I didn't know anything about. And it's been fascinating hearing about your work. So thank you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Francesca. Thanks. My next guest is um, a lady called Vic Bain. Welcome to Thinking Women. Vic, I actually don't really know how to introduce you because you are so diverse in the things that you do. Um, how, how, what, what is your title? How do you describe yourself? I guess I call myself a um, music industry consultant. Okay, but you work very, very heavily in diversity and inclusion within the music industry. What started that? What, was, there a, was there a moment in time you just thought, I need to get stuck in? to this area, there's something wrong here? I, th I think um, if you work <clears throat> as a woman in the music industry for any length of time, there is a point where you, where you look around and you say, where were all the women? And you know, that, yeah, that happened to, to me, partic particularly with my um, involvement with the Ivan Novello Awards. And I worked and, and led the, the organisation that run the Ivan Novello Awards for, for a number of years. And it's so male dominated. Shocking statistics, because I read your report. So can you remember what the statistics were? Well, and Ivan Novello Awards are songwriting awards, aren't they? That's, for, that's yeah. right, yes. Yeah. So um, it, most people will have heard of the Brits and they celebrate the uh, music artists and the Ivers celebrate and honour songwriters and composers. And they've been going since 1956. So I analysed 60 years of data looking at winners of the Ivan Novello Awards to discover in 2016 that only 6% of those awards had gone to women. Crazy. 6%. So that really um, focused my, my, <laughs> my mind, especially on women, women in music, and you know, led, led me to do a lot of ca campaigning. And for the past four years, I've been fully, fully focused on, on women in music. And for those of us who are outside the music industry, we might look at the Brits, which has just been on, which you've mentioned, uh, the festivals and, and, and videos on YouTube, and think, actually, there's quite a lot of women performers in the industry now. You can correct me if I'm seeing, seeing wrong. But it kind of feels like things have changed and there's more performers. But it's not just about performance, though, is it? The, the, it's an industry and the, there's the business side, mm. there is the songwriting side. So how, how is the female representation I think there on all those other aspects? Where, wherever you look, there are problems. And you know, I, think, I think we are sort of bedazzled by greater visibility of mm. incredible female performers. Mm. So we, you know, we think of Beyonce and, and Adele and you know, all of these, these uh, incredible women. And that their success sort of hides a lot of inequality. So in research I've done analysing record labels, over 200 record labels, looking at their rosters, which is the, you know, the, the artists that they um, are investing in. Mm -hmm. On average, it's only 20% of those artists are women. And this is current? This is... That was in 2019. Right. Uh, I don't. I don't believe it's changed so much. But I'm going. I'm going to do another another iteration of of that research next year to give it sort of a five mm. years to mm. see whether anything has Im has improved or not. There's some slight genre differentiation. So classical music and folk music is slightly better. Okay. But the heavier, heavy, you know, heavy metal and drum and, ba drum and bass and grime genres are, no. are almost female free zones. Yeah, I know that because my son's a drum and bass producer and, as he calls it, a sausage factory. <laughs> because he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't want it to be that way. He would, you know, he's, he's young, he's a young, a young chap. But yes, mm. I mean, he says it's just, mm. where, where are they? Where mm. are the women? And where is the problem coming from? I mean... You know, who knew? The music business sounds like a very patriarchal <laughs> industry. When did this start? What happened? Because you think music, creativity, women strongly featured. That's where my mind would naturally go, but it's not. Why did the music industry, do you think, become such a, a patriarchy? Well, I, I mean, it started in, you know, med the medieval times oh, right. and, okay. and, you know, going right back there. and the renaissance and you know and and and, and it, it's what it's what i call of uh, you know a thousand years of musical patriarchy 
So if you know, if you look at publishing companies and look at, and look at their rosters of um, of composers, living living and long long gone, it's it's a, it's a sausage factory. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's lots and lots thousands of of white men. So really, it's only since the Second World War that things have started to change, and women are you know fighting, literally fighting their way uh, onto onto festival stages and in, into the industry. But as you, yes, as you say, there were other pockets of um, songwriters and composers. It's it's fourteen percent of publishing rosters are, are women, with professional producers of, um, of of music which which is in the charts. It's two percent. Well, we've had some lovely, uh, uh, fantastic women on the show who have been in the sort of more technical side mm. of the industry, and the struggle is real there. You know, yeah. it's it like you said, like you're saying yourself. What you see when you see Adele, Adele does not represent. Fabulous as she is, mm -hmm. does not represent everybody else, every other woman that's mm -hmm. trying to make it, and particularly in production, from what I'm hearing. Yeah. But you've done something very powerful to ad try to address this balance, and it seems to be working. Your non-profit. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me all about the F word? The F list. For, oh, the F list. The, the F, F word. The F list for music. Classic, <laughs> Classic Lou mistake there. The which, F -list. which is, uh, you know, which which is sort of shop shop for fe for female. Well, out of out of the research that I did in 2019, which I called counting the music industry, which is available on my on my website. Out of out of that data, I realised I had um, collected details of thousands of women who were signed to, to, to labels and publishing companies. And I thought, gosh, what if I you know, um, extract that data and publish it as a Google spreadsheet for, for, for festival promoters, basically, mm -hmm. to, have a, to have a look. And I called it the roster of rosters. And I published this Google spreadsheet and a BBC journalist picked up on it and did a story about it and it all went a bit crazy which was amazing. I had hundreds of women contacting me saying, how can I get on this list? And everything was going great. And then lockdown. Oh, right. And then lockdown So that, that momentum mm. that had been created. Yeah, gone. Gone. And, uh, you know, and I had had, a, you know, lot, some various projects and events and, and things myself. And I, you know, I lost all of, all of my work along with most of the music industry yeah. in, a, in, a, in a few days. And I really sort of just had to take some time to think, well, gosh, what, what on earth do I do? And then I um, received some help from Cornwall Cultivator, who, who gave me a, you know, a, bit of, um, a bit of guidance about how to transition online. Mm -hmm. And so the creation of the, of the F list became my lockdown project, really. Okay. I, spent a few, okay. I spent a few months putting all of that data into a WordPress website. So now any woman can, can go on, and, and gender minorities as, as well, okay. uh, can, can go on and create their own listing. Fantastic. And please, can you tell all of our viewers how to find you? What's the address of that website so people can... flistmusic.uk. Okay, fantastic. And when they go on there, what will they find and what... And how, how can they navigate themselves around that to, to, to make something from it? There's a, there's a how to join page and it's a simple form. And women, it, as long as they're based in the UK, when they can tag themselves with a location such as Cornwall. And um, they can also, you know, they can put music feeds, YouTube, Bandcamp, SoundCloud. They can put all of their contact details so they can be found. Because basically this is a directory to ensure the music industry or fans can find musicians. There's about 30 genres, or they can create their own, their own music genre or in, instrumentation. And we now have about 5,700 listings. Wow. So there's no excuse, is there, mm -hmm. for festival bookers, mm -hmm. for labels to say, oh, we're just not getting people are just not coming to us because that's all that's that can be an argument an argument mm -hmm. that's used that that you know the female talent is just not there there that's what i that's it is what there I, that's what i hear <laughs> oh well, we couldn't find them yeah. you know we couldn't find them or we asked them all 
I've heard, I've heard that. It's okay. like, no, you didn't ask them all. Them <laughs> all. <laughs> you found all 5,000 women there on your list, plus all the other people. <laughs> So I've heard all sorts of excuses and, okay. uh, you know, and now I think this has really made the music industry um, sort of sit up and go, oh, oh, actually the women are out there and they oh. do play drums and electric guitar and they do produce and they do engineering and they do all of these incredible things. It's just, you know, you haven't put yourself out to be able to find them and I've done all of that work yeah. for so you. They can be lazy. You haven't been. <laughs> so, in the, so, so going forward, mm -hmm. we're celebrating International Women's Day mm -hmm. by celebrating all these wonderful women in music and arts and what have you. How optimistic, as a final question mm -hmm. for International Women's Day, how optimistic are you for women in music that things are, are they changing quickly enough and will they change enough for you? Um, as for us. Things are changing. We are seeing, you know, more more women studying music, more <clears throat> more women gradu graduating, more women studying music production, um, getting into the business and being being really amb ambitious. Are they changing fast enough? No. So, music industry, <laughs> please speed speed things up. You know, invest yeah. invest and promote w women as much as much as you can. That's what I'd like to say Brilliant. to the music industry. Thanks so much for joining us. Fantastic interview. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it for our three International Women Day specials. And I think you'd agree, they were kind of amazing. Yeah, it's and been well, fabulous. So thank you very much for joining us. And please do get in contact with any ideas. We're on social media, we're on Facebook, Instagram. So please give us your ideas for interviews and guests and sponsors so remember it's your show and we've got Kelsey as well to play us out haven't we fantastic yeah. so thank you so much Sheets are billowing, shadows on my wall Sight of clean linen settles down my soul Blue sea sparkles, I see them from my window With a breezy line of washing swaying to and fro A gentle zephyr, enough to fill a sail and go I'll take the slow life with time to watch my washing blow A kind of magic that can happen every day If I can just let go, I hang it on the washing line I hang it on the washing line I hang it on the washing line I'm gonna hang it on the washing line Bundle up your dirty clothes Shake them to the sky The transformation is complete Everything is dry if you see the wonder of the little things in life, you'll never lose hope on your way. Come back in the light. I hang it on the washing line On my washing line Bundle up your dirty clothes Shake them to the sky 
Transformation is gone.